exact second. Okay, we gotta do another match. Like, I'm gonna focus the whole time on trying to hear that. Hey guys, Andy with Get Awesome Gaming here. Just wanted to make a quick guide. I see a lot of people struggling with Elatrion, and I think I have some tips that could help to simplify the fight down. So if you guys find this helpful, please leave a like. It greatly helps out the channel. And if you'd like to catch more of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon. So this isn't going to be a full guide. I went through all of his moves in the footage that I had, and he had close to 30 moves. I'm not going to break every one of those down for you. So... You will have to kind of fight him and get used to those moves, but I just wanted to go through some bullet points that can help you in the fight. First off, eat large elemental resist. I believe it's the veggie platter. It's going to give you enough elemental resistance to where if you're at full health, some of his harder hitting moves not named Eschaton Judgment will not one-shot you. The next thing is take the proper element, okay? So we basically have three elemental weaknesses. When he's fire active, he's weak to ice. When he's ice active, he's weak to fire. When he's dragon active, he's weak to dragon. Now, it's not just enough to take the proper element because you're gonna wanna try to limit his elemental shifts down to just his two main elements. We'll cover that here in a little bit. The other thing you need to do is know his elemental hit zones. So, he takes his most elemental damage for melee in his forearms followed closely by his back legs. For range damage, his wings take the most elemental damage and they're a huge target. So if you're ranged, you're bring the proper element, lay into his wings, I guarantee you, you will not hit the Eschaton Judgment and Team Wipe. So the next thing is make sure to break his horns during Dragon. Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. I thought putting her in the sunroom was a good idea. So during the dragon phase is the only time you can break his horns. So you don't need to be aiming for his horns the entire fight. They're only breakable during the dragon phase. And what you essentially want to do is he will start in either fire or ice, depending on what the quest is. You want to bring the opposite element. Whenever he goes into dragon phase, the team wants to focus on his horns, break one of his horns. That will keep him from going into the opposing elemental phase. That's great for you because if you, let's say he starts off as fire and you bring all ice, clearly you don't want to go into his ice phase because he's going to completely resist your, da your damage and you're going to have trouble pushing him over the threshold into his Eschaton Judgment. You will know that you've pushed him over the threshold because the handler will send you a message basically saying something along the lines of you've suppressed his elemental damage or you're doing good at keeping his elemental damage in check. So that's basically the fight, is just know where to hit him with the hit zones to get him past the elemental threshold to avoid the team wipe and break his horns whenever he goes into dragon phase so that he doesn't enter the opposing elemental phase. There's really only four moves out of the 30 or so that aren't named Eschaton Judgment that I want to make you aware of. I've named all these moves as Pokemon moves because I don't believe they have their own names, so let's just run through these four real quick. First off is Draco Meteor. Draco Meteor, he basically flies into the air. You see a ton of dragon energy coming out of him. He is going to pick one of your team and he is going to fly at them like a meteor and try to kill them. That one hits pretty hard. The next fire one, I've, I've given the name of Flamethrower. Basically, he starts with a wave of fire coming out of his mouth and he will you know bring it across the entire arena if you are close enough to him to where you can get out of the way of it do so if not you're going to probably have to superman dive to avoid it the next move is frost breath it's not as spiky of a damage as the rest but what happens is if he sprays that frost breath and you're in the middle of it, as you try to run to the outside, you're going to take ticks of frost damage each, I don't know, however many seconds that he does. And you want to get out of that frost damage quickly as possible because if you tarry there for very long, it will kill you. The last move that I've targeted is called, or I have called it essentially, is Thunder Wave. He does a, essentially a... Uh, 
a chain of four lightning lines across the ground. They, they will come one after the other, proceeding from closest to him to furthest away. All I would say for these is make sure that you wait until the one before you goes off and then dodge before the one that goes underneath your feet comes. If you can avoid those four moves and make sure his eschaton judgment doesn't wipe you out, I think it's a fairly simple fight. I think a lot of people are making it into more than what it is. Bring the proper elements, know your hit zone values, break the horns during dragon, bring a health booster for eschaton judgment. That's always a helpful one. Sometimes you don't need it, but it's always just good to have it so that the entire team can gather around it, use their healing items and make sure nobody goes during that phase. And then just deal with those four main moves and it should be pretty much good game, guys. So if you found this helpful, once again, just drop a like and uh, hope you guys take them down. And until next time, get awesome.